हेलो निकिता डू यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम आल्सो अनिर्वन सर आई सर इन दिस वीडियो दे सेड यू हैव सॉरी यू शुड बी फैमिलियर विद द बेसिक लिनक्स कमांड आई एम नॉट फैमिलियर विद द लिनक्स कमांड सो व्हाट शुड आई व्हाट शुड आई डू ओके इन दैट केस आई विल प्रोवाइड अ लिंक uh so that uh, you can familiarize with the basic linux command okay okay sir thank you okay hello biraj ha yes yes uh, 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 uh yesterday yesterday actually saturday from whole day i am working that uh, i have done the uh, uh, ubuntu the installation the basher c file in the in the program has been lost i don't know how the command has been uh, would you once again the recheck the basharc file of the uh, in the present moment i can't look at the basharc file since uh, today is the uh, setting up a case uh, in a open form so in uh, in this case uh, john has already uh, pasted a google meet link you can join that link okay regarding which the link? installation link? error i will i will send you ha uh, hello viraj yes yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. i have I have joined the Google uh, Meet link, but uh, no one is allow me to get in. Okay, I will paste the link again. Mm. I I have already applied to, uh, for in, but no one is allowed to uh, let me in. Okay, okay, I will. Mm. Please allow me to let in. Sure, sure. I have just uh, pasted a link mm. regarding the installation error, so you guys can uh, mm. uh, open that link. Yeah, and, no. I mean. And and I have I have to mute the uh, what the uh, I have, that the Zoom meeting should be over. Not it will be minimized. Yeah, please leave the meeting and open that link. Copy that link and open the link. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rane, um, is it okay if I share my screen for a second? Uh, I think I have some issue with my visualization in Paraview, and the same thing is happening with Gedit as well. Viraj, what would you see? Uh, okay, okay. I, I just missed it. So regarding the setting up a test case, uh, cavity case in the open form, do you guys have any problem? Um, the thing is, I don't have problem with the test case and running the simulation, but the vis visualization bit in the para view, there hmm. seems to be a glitch or something with the para view. Okay, okay. Hmm. Like there, there might be a like uh, blurry uh, screen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is the problem of that is not the problem of open form. That is the problem of display error. In that case, you have to restart the PC and again uh, type the paraform command. Cinematic pleasure file P and the velocity file U. Okay, got it. Thank you. Uh, hello, Nikita. What uh, Google Meet link are you talking about? Is it the uh, Google Meet? No, Viraj. Uh, this is a Linux command link. Okay, Linux command. Okay, okay. Ha, huh, yes. Yeah, yeah uh, I am uh, Geo Sebastian. Uh, yeah. So the talk is happening in some other link because I because of some technical issues I could not. Uh, I was I could only rejoin now. I joined in the initial uh, first session, but then after that I faced some technical issues and uh, only now I am. Joining back, okay. Actually, like Professor Janini has talked about uh, an overview of the CFD. So, uh, in that case, uh, we will provide you other recording. Okay. Uh, and you can see. Okay. So now is it a break now? Uh, in in the meantime, you can uh, watch the video. Uh, okay. So, did you download the open form? Yeah, I have the the other day I joined Saturday. I think your team helped me to download uh, open. Okay, form. Uh, okay. I have pro provided a link uh, okay. where you can see the video and follow the commands. Okay. Okay. I mean, uh, is this link for uh, installation or no uh, for okay. running the simulation in open form? Okay. Okay. Fine. 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 So right now, the is, the, is it some kind of break in between? No, right now, like everyone is following the video. Okay, the spoken tutorial. Yes, correct. Okay, fine, fine. fine. Okay. Fine. Uh, hello, everyone. Nikita as well. So I have provided a link. Uh, this CFD direct where you guys can uh, see the basic Linux command and get used to it. Okay. So I will provide uh, the link again so you guys can 
go there and see what are the basic um, Linux command. Uh, hello, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, I'm watching this uh, file transport properties. Firstly, okay, okay. First, there is a header form file header. Yeah. In some files, we use this location term, and in some files, we don't. So, is is there any specific thing, or we can remove this or not? Uh, what uh, what location are you talking about? Like uh, gedit uh, system no, uh, control the form file header in each files the input yeah. files. Of mm -hmm. like uh, we can take the example of transport properties file. Yeah. Uh, there is a header form file, and uh, we have written the format as sky class dictionary. And in some other files, the location term is uh, not there, but in this in some files it is there. We are uh, depicting the location like constant folder or something. Yes, so, yes, it is. It is be, uh, because to denote uh, on which directory it is presented. But in some uh, files, we are not uh, writing this. Okay, I will, I will, writing this. yeah, I will guide you uh, the steps in like, uh, let's say five minutes. And okay. uh, I will also talk about See, that. One more question I want to uh, get your attention to. Okay. The object is like uh, transport properties. Whether mm -hmm. we use the same name or can we use some different user defined name for this? Or it will be same as that of the file name or different? No, we have to define it as a transport properties or something. Okay, the the name, uh, the correct spelling. Yeah, the correct using. spelling. The C, it is the C plus plus, right? So it is mm -hmm. very case sensitive language. So even okay. if you miss the mm -hmm. to capitalize some words, some letters, then it will show an error. See, we can uh, create an object for any class, right? Yeah. So whether we have to use the same object name that is depicted in this file. Or can we change that? Uh, so actually, like if you want to make some, like let's say a file, like let's say transport properties. So yes. you have to define the same class. Okay, the same. I have to use the same name as the object uh, yes. as that of the file name. Yes, correct. Okay, so if I change this transport properties file name to something else, I have to do it. No, no, no. It 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 won't work. Okay, the so it is defined in the solver that the name would be transport properties. Correct, correct, correct. Oh, thanks. Sir, I am Pratik Kripna. Actually, uh, I have classes, so I missed the first one hour class and uh, I am going to miss the next one hour class also. So, when will be the recordings available? Uh, is it available to tonight, by tonight? So, I can watch. So, you have missed the uh, last session? Last, last one hour class and uh, now from 12, uh, 12 also I have class. So Pratik, uh, typically recordings, we will only decide at the end of the course if we want to release it or not, okay? So it is best for you to attend everything because due to some logistic things, we might sometimes we don't release it also. So it's best you attend as much as possible, okay? Yeah, there are one small question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, in this, uh, actually, I want to know uh, how to change the FP schemes. There is uh, in that uh, block, uh, there is a control day. Yeah. Uh, there is a, uh, in uh, text editor. Um, how we can change the FP schemes? All these things I want to know. Uh, if possible, uh, can you please explain those things also? Okay. So I think um, those are advanced things. So we will slowly take you through that. Um, it's best to kind of follow through with the yeah, okay, okay. Uh, at the end of the workshop uh, we, we will get it right? yes you would know how to do that at that point okay, no problem now I'm going to demonstrate uh, in my own uh, system so first of all go to the run directory so in that case type this command cd foam run so you will go to the run directory and after that copy the tutorial incompressible inside incompressible there is an ico form solver so remember uh, to put the f capitalized so otherwise it will show an error 
and after cavity you have to uh, put the dot sign in order to specify the destination folder so inside that go to the cavity case and let's see the boundary condition so in the boundary condition there is a moving wall right so the upper wall is moving uh, in the direction of x axis with the velocity of 1 meter per second and uh, the fixed wall uh, is given no slip condition uh, where at that uh, at that location the velocity will be zero and front and back is uh, considered empty since this is the 2d case so close this file and go to the gedit 0 p file this is the pressure file here the zero gradient is given since uh, the value is uh, the same as the adjacent cell so let's go to the gedit pressures file so zero gradient is given and uh, zero gradient is given for both moving wall and the fixed wall since uh, it sets a value uh, same as the adjacent file so let's go to the control dict file system control dict so in the control dict file icoform solver is used and uh, the end time is 0 0.5 second that means the simulation will stop at 0 0.5 second and the start time is 0 so i will also close this file so run the block mesh command okay i forgot to go to the block mesh so there are eight vertices as you can see and uh, the 2021 20, means the, there is 20 divisions in x axis 20 divisions in y axis and one division in z axis So run the command block mesh. So the block mesh has been generated. Uh, actually, the 400 cells has been generated. And after that, run the simulation by typing ICO form. Remember, uh, some uh, participants has uh, placed the space sign between the ICO and form. So please don't do that. So the simulation has been ended. So you can see the result here. In the paraform, click on the apply button and uh, in the VTK block colors, press U button and run the simulation. Did, as, did all get the same results as I have shown? So, this is the result I have got after running the simulation. Okay, so uh, I think most of you have got it. Anybody who's not got it at this point. So if you can type yes, if you finished it, be helpful. So mostly yes. So what I will do here is, um, so I would like you to, what I've done is there are two main input parameters, which is the velocity and the delta t. Okay. So um, I would like you to pick maybe some value in the lower end, some value in the middle end, some value in the last, and simulate three simulations. You can take a screenshot of your original flow and the three different flows. Okay. And at the end of it, tell me what you, I would like you to share your screen with all the four pictures and maybe you can put it in a document, paste it in a document and then maybe you can tell me what is the difference that you see. Okay. And be flexible. If you just don't want to change delta T and only the U values. Yes. Um, if you want to change the U, uh, you want to change delta T and keep U constant, that also is fine. But we want to see why and if the simulation looks different to whether if it doesn't okay so we will give you a very quick 20 minutes to 25 minutes to be able to do this paste it in the document keep it ready and then i would maybe randomly pick on you to show me and talk about your results okay so i will uh, 
keep this i think viraj do you have this document on you or i i probably will yeah i have uh, i have that document you have it can yeah. you post it into the chat window so that okay uh, i mean they can download it from their side also for later references sure sure ma'am apologies i was not muted before but when i got the call fine hello everybody i have uh, shared the gold drive link for your future reference hello ali uh in order to decrease the current number you either have to decrease the velocity or delta t okay yeah good ali you have picked it on because that's the whole idea of the separator because we need to understand uh we can't randomly change these things without consequences okay so that's a good uh, observation you made it's a good start hello um is there a command to save every new iteration that we did uh, while changing the velocity and delta t into a different directory cuz i think uh, all the time steps are getting together and the simulation is getting a bit messy like uh, did you change the right interval i changed the velocity and also the delta t but then yeah. all the simulation results that are forming are forming in the same folder yeah this is the in the open form it will write inside the folder right inside the case so that is the uh, that is the like a structured uh, way of uh, uh, pasting the uh, bound uh, pasting the results into the case folder but is there a direct command to uh, every time save a new uh, iteration into a different folder yeah you can change the right interval you can change the right interval value like let's say if you want to paste the simulation result every iteration you can type uh, like let's say delta t like your delta t is 0.001 you can uh, say the right interval as one okay i have completed the default one and three cases from this now what so you have already done the simulation yes okay so uh, make a uh, report that contains uh, the two or three plots and you can even present the screen okay fine thanks hi viraj uh, i am not able to run the block mesh detector you are not able to yeah, run the same to yeah, block mesh yeah so in that case type block mesh b l o c k yeah i have typed it and i have showing some error i will just post it is it okay Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, Viraj. Uh, I was doing the previous uh, mesh. Uh, what do you do? And when I'm writing M K D I R, uh, uh, slash P, uh, open form. I don't know. So in the M K D I is missing uh, operand. If you have already, that is the command to create a run directory. If you have already created the run directory, you don't have to do that. So I just start. Uh, didn't do that uh, didn't do that part so uh, in that if you have already made the run directory you don't have to use that command so uh, what command should i use directly cd command yeah di directly go to di directly copy the directly use cp uh, space uh, hyphen r and uh, form tutorials incompressible oh. i form cavity cavity yeah that that command okay 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 thank you This is like the uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, Paritos. Yes, the main problem is you in the Linux command always name the case uh, with uh, underscore. Don't put the space sign. So okay. that's why uh, the, it it shows that kind of error. See, you have put the name. Lead driven cavity. You have to put uh, uh, underscore in place of the space. Okay. Okay. And uh, you get that error. Okay. So now it will run after. Yeah, it will run. It will run. Hello, Viraj. Hello. Ah, uh, I'm getting an error like set document metadata failed. Ah, uh, in, in the initial stage itself. Ah, uh, did you use the yeah, Yes, yes, G edit. uh yes. which uh, operating uh, system such. are you using uh this is a uh, windows 11 uh in that case you can also use notepad.exe in place of gedit 
notepad.exe. Exe, yes. Yo, thank you. So may I, may I ask how many of you been able to finish? Can you say yes or no? Uh, Ma'am, I have prepared the images in a PDF format. <laughs> okay. So if you can maybe share your screen, that would be... Good. Okay, ma'am. Great. Okay. So... Um, yes, ma'am. So, Sonu, do you want to show me if there is any difference from case to... Maybe you can make it uh, smaller so that we're able to compare to three images. Okay. I'm actually I have uh, taken snapshots and made a word file out of it. The hundred percent on the PDF, you make it about. Uh, yes. Okay. 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 Let me do it. So while Sony is preparing everything, let me share. Screen. So, um, very quickly in open form, um, you followed a certain path, file path name, right? which said incompressible certain other things. So the first thing that we need to understand is open form has different sets of solvers. It keeps different folders for different sets of solvers. And the solvers that um, are categorized are incompressible, compressible, heat transfer, multi-phase, Lagrangian, discrete methods, combustion, DNS, there are boxes. And in this case, we would largely be talking about incompressible heat transfer multiphase. We are also, and most of the applications are in these, right? Uh, we do talk about a little bit of compressible. Uh, from basic, we would probably be using the Laplacian form. And I think we have a lecture on discrete uh, element method. Okay. So today, we have started you off on incompressible, which is the most basic form. And uh, under incompressible, there are different solvers, correct? So there is boundary form, you can forget about boundary form. There are four main solvers that are there under incompressible. Ico form, pimple form, piezo form, and simple form. So typically in open form, the solvers are appended with a name called form with the first part talking more about its function. So ICO form, which is what I think you've used for the first spoken tutorial, is incompressible, incompressible form, okay? Then you have simple form, pimple form, and piezo form. So these are all different ways of solving. You would have heard simple algorithm, piezo algorithm, and all that. So these are algorithms using that form. Okay, so there are typically four solvers. Okay, okay, so now coming to the next question. How are these solvers different, right? So my first question is, if I if I give you a, right now we have done a spoken tutorial, wherein lid-driven cavity was the problem, and icoform was used. But if you were given a lid-driven cavity problem and asked to solve it, you would have to choose a solver. So you would have to know what is the capability of every solver. Okay. So typically, the difference between these solvers lie in basically these two terms. Okay. So you have the conservation momentum equation, correct? So in the momentum equation, you have the transient term. Okay. And then you have turbulence. Okay. What are these two things? If you have laminar, there is no additional force which is attributed to turbulence. So this term is not there when you're solving it as pure laminar. But when your force or flow is more, there is a turbulence modeling that comes into perspective. So certain solvers can do turbulence. Okay. And the other aspect is whether it is transient or a steady state solver. What do we mean by a transient or a steady state solver? Anyone can tell me? I mean, steady state solver, the temporal term is not there, but uh, in transient, it is there. Okay. So, for, for example, let us talk about the lid driven cavity problem, right? Is it a transient or a steady state problem? 
I'm after some time, it seems that it is satisfied, but I from I think, transient solver. So right. my question is problem independent. I said, is it is lid driven cavity a steady state problem or a transient problem? If it has time steps, it's a steady state. It's a it is steady state state problem, problem, but okay. we are doing it with a transient solver. So is that wrong? Um, not actually, ma'am. After some time, I think we are on to that solution. It is not changing with time. So maybe in the chat window, everyone can first type first question. Uh, and I want all of you to kind of venture. Yeah, so some of you have typed. So some of you. So I want to know if uh, the lid driven cavity, the problem itself, forget about how I'm solving it. I solved it to the microphone. Is it transient or a steady state problem? Oh, man, can I just add something to it? Yeah, I'll let you one second. Okay, I'm just looking at what people it depends on the Reynolds number. I don't know what that means, but yes. So a lot of you have said it's transient. Steady. Okay, there's Harsh which says it's steady. Okay. So that is very interesting. It can be steady state or transient. Very good, very good. So Arun, can you tell me why do you think it can be steady state or transient? Arun, or maybe Vipul, you say it can be both. We can take any initial conditions. The steady state will be set. Uh, okay. So I would look at this yes. very, okay. Okay, I appreciate all your answers, right? Um, so this is some aspect which has to be very, very, um, closely thought about in CMD. So I have this box, okay, and like somebody said, it is stationary. So let me think that I'm in a in a chemical factory, okay, and there is this chemical in this box which has to be stirred at a particular velocity. So I'm there. This box is there, and imagine there's a conveyor belt on the top, and the role of the conveyor belt is to move at a constant pace velocity. Okay, so right now what happens is um, you have stationary liquid, which is your initial condition, and then this starts to move. And it runs for 10 minutes, and then there is this circulation that has now become constantly moving. So, yes, steady state means your full field is unchanging with time. That definition, all of us is, are clear with. So after 10 minutes, my flow field is steady. It's rotating the same way. Okay. Now the question was, is the problem steady? Okay. So then you should first ask me, you should first ask the person, what is your interest or your question of interest what do i mean by this now if i'm in that chemical industry and i say listen my time is important i need to get to this steady moving velocity okay very quickly okay and my interest is my interest is how this domain velocity is whether this constitution in the steady region, is it is it mixing properly? That is my region. That is my interest. Okay, so um, you know, I or let me rephrase it. There is you put color dye in this, right? And I want to know whether that particular domain in the steady region has that particular shade of pink. That is my interest as an industry person, right? So that that means my requirement to you as a CFD person, you are the CFD expert, is I don't care about whether it takes 10 minutes or 20 minutes, but I want to know what is the color of that particular part of that flow. Dai vaham pe poncha, whether it is pink in color, that particular shade. So that means for you, you have to anyway reach only that steady state part, correct? You are not interested about the from that stationary, how it goes to steady, you are not interested. You want to that, come to that steady state part. So then, for you, steady state simulation is far simpler. 
less time consuming why because that transient term is not there in your problem okay but i will give you a caveat the steady state numerical solver is more unstable why because from zero you are having to go to that other so typically much simpler problems you can do steady state simulation very quickly but for more complex problems typically they will start out with transient okay and then they will swap to steady there are other worse things also being done but it turns uh, from case to case okay coming back so as an engineer i have given you the requirement that i want to know what is the distribution of the color at that point in time okay so that means that you have to um start by saying um you know what is the question that you have for me now if i am a person industry person which says uh for me time is more important i don't want to start in 20 minutes i want to start in 10 minutes i want to reach that steady state in 10 minutes then for you what is important is um this initial stage of stationary to that steady state how quickly can i reach what is the velocity that needs for me to get that time window becomes more important then for you you will have to run that transient simulation to track the time from 0 to that point okay so question of in this case your end story the problem is steady state but your simulation depends on what is being asked of you okay so right now you have done it with the transient solver okay so that was the question okay so now coming back to this step where i said transient versus whether this is turbulence right these are the two parameters which set apart the solvers so let us look at okay i'll come back to this so solver capability wise right solver capability wise you have what is called a icofoam which is a transient solver yes but it doesn't do turbulence never mind ours is a laminar problem right okay so can i okay can i run the problem with any of the other solvers so coming back to my question your task is lid driven cavity solution but you have to solve the you have to choose the solver so would you be able to choose from any of this you will have to choose whether any of the other solvers will do the work so i said this is a laminar problem right yes we can choose any other solver just to we will solve the turbulence part correct so there is you can use any of these solvers a transient solver will do like i explained to you right uh you would just run it up to the point where it reaches steady state if steady state is your interest you would run the transient part if the initial part is of interest correct now if you were to given the task of running a transient problem would you at all choose simple form no no why you could add a temporal technically in open form you could add a temporal term and solve it yes you can but the thing that you need to understand is so these are the combinations if you want to run a transient problem then you can choose icofoam pimple foam or piezo foam you can do simple foam with a transient term but it is a little bit more complicated in open foam only because there are several libraries and typically adding transient terms means you should have a solver which is capable of handling some of those schemes so ideally adding terms is not suitable you choose what is closest to your requirement okay now if mine had turbulence would i choose icofoam if mine had a turbulence i won't because i would have to add turbulence model 
See, these have turbulence and is removing the turbulence capability. That is easier than adding a whole turbulence model. So I can stay away from icoform. I will go to pimple form, which is a transient and a turbulence problem. Okay. So always keep your edits in open form to a minimum. Okay. So now what we will try and do is we will um, we will do the open form part, uh, which is the icoform solution that you did in simple form. Okay, so that means you are shifting from a transient solver to the steady state. Right now, my interest is only to see the final velocity plot, correct? So I am going to not be interested in transient run. So I am saying I'm going to do simple form and I will change turbulence to laminar and just run it. And let us see if we get the same result. Okay, so before we do that, Sayantin, you had a question, right? Let me come back to you. Uh, no, 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 no question. It's just. The initial question you are asking whether it's a steady or unsteady. Just I just want to sub add at some point, but you have covered it. Okay, great. So, um, so what we will do, Sonu, we will come back to you to show your plots and colors. What I want, um, Viraj will now walk you through how to do the same problem, not in ICO form, but in simple form, which is a steady state solver, meaning it has no transient terms. Okay. And this turbulence capability, you will remove it and say laminar and run. And let us see. And Sonu, you can add the same picture also into that plot. Okay. And I will come back in 15, 20 minutes to check on all of you. And in this time, I want all of you to kind of catch up, finish up all your simulations. Okay. And I will touch base with you in about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Viraj, go ahead. Hello, everybody. So I will send a Google Drive link, which encompasses all the commands you require. So I've just posted a link. Please, uh, everyone, check. Okay, go to that uh, Drive link, and there is a presentation that has all the commands that that you require to simulate a cavity case in simple form. So go to that PPT. First of all, go to the run directory. Okay. To go to the run directory, type cd dollar sign space dollar sign foam run. I will I will also present at the same time so that so I see all uh, some of the people have uh, are struggling to use Notepad in the Windows. So you can use this command. Test. So you can use this uh, command in place of gedit, okay? In place of gedit. In gedit, you put the command gedit space system control dict. But if uh, gedit doesn't work uh, in a system, type this command and uh, play uh, and type enter. In my system, uh, I don't have Notepad, so that's why I use gedit. But if uh, you are Windows users and um, gedit is not working, use this, okay? Use that command Notepad.exe and give the destination of that file. If it is inside the system or if it is inside the control, so do that, okay? So after you go to the run directory, I, I will start from the first, okay? Type this command, cd poem run. Type this command and you will go to the run directory. See, the run directory is shown. And after that, just just copy and paste this command, the first command.
So go to this P. After you uh, type the command FB solution, this FB solution. Type this command P ref cell zero P ref value zero. Okay, this P ref cell zero P ref value zero in line forty one. Do not delete any 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 file. Just type this command P ref cell. Note the capital I capitalized letter zero and P ref value also zero in order to. Uh, because we have used zero gradient boundary condition. So that's why we have to use this command. Okay, inside the FV solution file. And close this file. And go to the terminal. And uh, close it and go to the momentum transport file. Okay. Copy. And use this. Paste. Okay. So momentum transport file. See, RAS means Reynolds average simulation. So we don't want uh, that simulation. We want laminar. So we have to use this command and control save. Always remember to save it. Save and close it. And after that, change RAS to laminar to simulate laminar case. And after this, go to the control dict file. Okay. So copy this and paste here. Control dict. And so there is this. 47 to 64 commands uh, in the in the in the in that line. So you have to select it and delete this. We don't want this because it is because why we are deleting this file is because this is previously implemented in another case. Now we want to simulate in uh, the cavity case in the simple form. So that's why we are deleting it. Okay. So control save and close it. After this, go to the transport properties where we add, can define the kinematic viscosity. Okay. GAD constant transport properties. And you can see the Newtonian trans transport model. And this is the kinematic viscosity. So this is the dimension of the kinematic viscosity. And here, 10 to the power minus 5 is defined. But in the cavity case, we have defined it as a 10 to the power minus 2. So remember to change it. And after this, close it after saving it so so now we are set now we can run the block mesh command in order to run the mesh okay block mesh so the mesh has been created the same mesh see you can see the 400 cells right so this is the same mesh we have done in the cavity case and now run the simple form instead of icoform because this is the std state solver now we are running the same kind of simulation in the std state okay so type this command, simple form. Now simulation has been converged. Now let's go to the para, para view. So in order to do that, we have to run this simulation. We, we have to run this command, para form. So click on apply, apply button and click on the U button. Okay. And run the simulation. So you can see. So this is the uh, same result you have got in the uh, using the icoform solver now we are getting the same result using the simple form solver so this is the process so you can see the same simulation velocity contour in simple form and velocity contour in icoform thank you so if you guys have any problem uh, please uh, place that queries in the chat we will help you okay thank you guys Make sure you run the simulation inside the uh, the piece daily case. Okay. Could you tell me uh, why did we delete the code lines from forty seven to sixty four inside control dict file? Okay. In that case, they are uh, plotting. Uh, they are using the streamline function, so we don't need that because it requires the k epsilon value as well. So we don't require that. This is the laminar case, so we have to uh, re remove that line. Okay. And um, what about the kinematic viscosity? Why did we change that? Okay. In the peach daily case, the kinematic vis viscosity was 10 to the power minus 5. And in the, in the cavity case, the kinematic viscosity is 10 to the power minus 2. In order to set the same condition, we have to change it. Understood? 
Okay, so just to get the same uh, yes, answer. Yes, correct. In order to get the same result, you have to set the same boundary condition, same uh, transport properties, right? So right, we yeah. have to do that. Got it. Thank okay. you. Okay. So have everyone been able to finish? Could we wait for a couple of minutes, maybe five, ten minutes? Okay, there are still some errors that are coming up. So we'll wait for about five, ten minutes for everyone to catch up before going on to the next step. Uh, hello, Minaxi. Uh, so you got that error. Uh, it's because uh, the paraform doesn't work. In that case, okay. I think uh, in uh, you have also uh, come in the previous session that we have already told you that uh, to install the para view externally and you can use that command okay okay externally but how to access it okay yeah. you can access it by using the command touch space result dot oh. form and okay. go to the para view and look at that file and open that dot uh, form file and you will get the same result okay okay okay, okay. okay. hello yeah, like uh, my simulation is not running. As soon as I press play, play button, the paraform is getting closed. Paraform is getting closed. Yeah. Like, can you share the screen? What what has Sh happened? Show sure, yeah. Is it visible? Yes, correct, correct. Yeah. I think. Uh... I'll I'll try it once. Okay. Close. Yeah. And run the simulation in the play button. Go to the play. Wait a second. Yeah. Yes. It's getting close. That's it. I think uh, the error is uh, because of like your boundary condition. Please check. Like uh, you, what you do is cd dot dot type cd. 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 Space dot dot. Okay. I uh, press enter. Yeah. And uh, delete that file because uh, I think you have uh, missed one one or two steps. So that's why it uh, it shows that error because uh, you missed the copy uh, copying of that uh, boundary condition into your uh, pitch daily case. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So what you do is uh, remove this pitch daily case. And again, uh, start the steps from the start. Okay, sure. Sir, can you please help me as well? Mm, like, what is the what is the problem? What error did you get? Like, uh, I have already showed the demonstration. Yeah. So, what you do is, I have also uh, gave you the uh, PDF file where uh, it has. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I tried uh, until the step. Okay, until what step? Like, um, I I share I have shared the screenshot as well in the chat box if you could see. Okay, okay, I will see. Hello, Umar Reddy. Yes, yes, I got the uh, it's moment transport up to that sir, but uh, yeah, mesh not created in that one. Okay, mesh not created. So after that, yeah, you can. So uh, on which step are you in? Like, sir, I have shared you the screenshot. Could you see that? Uh, still not uh, visible. Can you share uh, again? Uh, sir, I have directly it's shared it. Do you want me to sh do the everyone? Uh, you can share the screenshot. Yeah, I have shared you, sir. Okay, okay. I will see. But first, I will look at the Uma ready case. So, so you have already done until this step, right, Uma? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what you do is uh, uh, just replace RAS to laminar in the 17 line. 17 line. Yeah. Replace here. RS. Replace LAMI, LAMI and AR. Laminar. Laminar. Okay. But replace that. Enter. No, no, no. Replace that. RAS. Delete that. Okay. Yes, correct. And also semicolon. Delete. And put that semicolon in the uh, after laminar because it shows the end of the line in the in the C plus plus. The semicolon means the end yeah. of the line. Okay, save it and close. Now okay. you can proceed uh, another step. Okay. Okay, sir. Now you can unshare your screen. Hello, sir. Sir, I'm not able to open my block mesh. How can I open this? 
So in order to do that, uh, you can use uh, zedit or uh, notepad.exe system uh, and block mistake. So can you uh, write this uh, in chat box? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Sir, could you see my screenshot or still not here? Still not visible. What you can do is share the screen. Yeah, sure, sir. Sir, how to delete the pitch daily file? Hello? Uh, hello, yeah. Yes, sir. Is my screen visible, sir? Yeah, still, yeah, it, it is visible. Just, just a second. Just wait a second, okay? Yeah, sure, sir. Okay, now, uh, okay, CPR, FD. I think you have not uh, done the previous case. Did you use the, did you also do the cavity case following the spoken tutorial? So that's why there is an error. Oh, okay, so. Did you not miss the dot at the end? Okay. So After then, space. Sir? sir, actually I was trying to install the open form during that period so i think she has not uh, this copied the cavity case okay yeah, sir, i'm using uh, my open form in windows 11 so like what should i open this get g edit or so if g edit is not so if g edit is not working use notepad.exe okay okay sir. okay uh, hello, Swapna. Yes, sir. Can you, uh, yeah. Down, scroll up, scroll up. Type control C. Okay, you, you didn't make the run directory, right? No, sir. So in order to do that, I think this will be, this will take a, uh, this will take a while. So uh, what you, what you do is I will yes, post a uh, nice. Google Meet link and you can yes, join. Sir. Oh, sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, I think, um, can I just come in a bit? So, everyone, um, maybe we can discuss a little bit. I'll fin try to finish what I have to say in 10 minutes so that everyone gets a perspective. And then we will uh, finish the session from my side so that all of you can, with Biraj and John's help, complete the rest of the procedure. Otherwise, it feels very incomplete to be able to do that. So, just hang on. So, Sonu, are you ready with your snapshots? Yes, ma'am. Wait, can you share your screen, please? Yes, ma'am. So, Biraj, by the time, maybe you can take Swapna to the G meet and then finish that error. Okay, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Um, here's a file. Is it visible? Yeah, it's visible. So, um, this is the default case. Different, and, uh, different. And, yeah. Let me move down. So there's a velocity of 5. Yes. There's a velocity of 15. And there is a velocity, right? 14. So, so every, can you come further down? Which was the velocity? Um, this is the default case of IQ form. And this is for simple form, the first case. Great. OK. So everyone, can you at least see uh, if you go up to the second row soon? Right. Good, good, good comparisons. So if you see, can you see a difference between the default case and maybe what is there in the second row first? Um, and what would you think the, the difference is? Now, anyone can probably unmute and say. What, what do you think? Just looking at the profile. Um, as the velocity is increasing, the higher velocity cells, the, where the velocity is higher at the centroids, are shifting towards the right of the cavity. Correct. So, in a way, um, would you need lesser time steps or more time steps without looking at what settings you did? Uh, would you need lesser time steps or more uh, time steps? Or let me read. BT ka value should it be low or high? Ma'am, if we are lowering the value of time uh, interval DT, then I think the number of iterations required are more. Okay. No, but my question is, if, say, my velocity is 10 meters per second instead of 5. Yes, ma'am. I need a lower DT or a higher DT? Ma'am, to for the CFM conditions, I have to calculate those values so that the CFM... The so, you understand what is. CFL is, right? So, everybody else, can you type what you understand 
Do you know what CFL is? Yes or no? Do you know what CFL is? No. Okay. So there's a good half of no and yes. So let me, um, so Sono, let me share my screen for a little bit. Maybe I can explain to them. Okay, ma'am. Uh, yeah, you can, yeah, yeah, you can show. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So let us first understand what CFL is since many of you also know it. This is how I picture it, right? So let me see that I have a set like this. Or let me even think I have, I'm standing in front of, uh, you know, a window. And I'm seeing, say, a bird fly by, right? And I keep my eyes closed for 10 minutes. And the bird flies by. Will I be able to see the bird? No, right? I will think that the situation, there is no bird. If I have closed my eyes for not five minutes, but maybe one minute and I open it. So every one minute I'm opening it, right? So the bird flies by within that one minute. I say, ah, there is a bird, right? Now I open every 30 seconds. Then I see that the bird has come, sat on the window, okay? maybe hopped twice and then gone out, right? If I blink my eye every 10 seconds, I see that how many times the bird flaps its wing to come and sit down in the first day. So what is the idea? Some phenomenon, right? Whatever frequency of the phenomenon, I have to have a time window suitable to capture that phenomenon, okay? So in the concept of current number, if I have a cell, cell is my control volume, my visualization window. So then a particular flow, if it has a particular velocity, right? That means that event is crossing through that box in that time. So if I have to, if you remember, you made choices or approximations in schemes, you took gradient, right? What did you say? You presume that this is going to be somewhere midway between these two values, correct? So you're approximating. When you're approximating, you should be sure about this value and this value is correct. That means you have to calculate these values correctly. But if I have to capture this value in every cell correctly, that means I have to do proper solving of all the terms, which is also the temporal term within this cell properly. Okay, that means I have to capture the event in that time window. Otherwise, it won't be correct. Correct? So, current number says or is defined as u delta t by delta x. Now, what does that mean? u delta t is a distance. If my flow is of velocity u and my time step is delta t, travel a distance of one cell length. Okay. So u delta t by delta x should at the max be equal to 1. What do I mean to say? In that time step that I am going to do an iteration, when I do a calculation, I am actually saying stop. I am going to do calculation. I am I'm putting a meter or a reader into the flow to get the value. So I am saying, listen, within that delta t, I am going to put the meter again. And it should have moved at the max within one cell. It shouldn't. That's when I will get if it is within, if it had traveled five cells by the time I put a meter here, it's pointless, right? So current number is a measure and CFL condition basically gives you this criteria. It says U delta T by delta X is maximum, is ideally one is advised. Okay, so now if your velocity increases, for a same delta x, then your delta t should ideally be a little lower so that you know you're able to capture it within that cell distance, which is why in that assignment you are given different u and t combinations. Okay, now some of you would have just probably changed u without changing the delta t, and your current number would have become high. 
then immediately it's an indication that if it is going above one that you have to pull down your delta t for more complex cases people will have to adjust their mesh they will remesh with smaller meshes and then adjust their delta t so that this courant number comes below one so it is a very dynamic case okay so this is the importance of trying different u delta t and of course we have not taught you block mesh so we have not asked you to change the mesh you can change the mesh if you all go to the block mesh file you can make it a finer this is an activity you can play around uh, if you make it you know instead of 50 cells you make it 100 cells how does this resolution change does it make it better or after a point there is nothing that is helpful okay so these are things you have to understand okay any so what are the things that we have learned today right in today's activity first of all we have learned that we have something called a reynolds transport theorem which is necessary to convert a systemic law into a control volume law okay then this governing equation has the form of a transport equation which has advection and diffusion terms. And choices for schemes of these diffusion terms become very important. Okay. And diffusion as well as advection schemes have to be solved by a solver. Okay. So if you see, if all of you open up your files there are four folders that are there what are that block mesh control dict fv schemes fv solutions so fv schemes is where you can play around with your scheme advection scheme or diffusion scheme fv solutions is where you will choose the solver the matrix solver control dict controls your write time, print time, all of that, right? Block mesh controls your meshing. So this maps on to your exact CFD methodology, which I told you about, correct? So we talked about schemes. We talked about how algebraic equation comes, matrix comes, correct? Then we did a simulation with open form, basic lid-driven cavity simulation. We saw that this is not that icoform is specifically for lid-driven cavity. You can use any solver in open form to do that, provided you tune it to the problem requirement. Okay. So we saw icoform and we also ran it with simple form. We saw that the results does not change much. But if you are running a transient solver, you are having what? A delta t term. Correct? Because it's transient. So icoform ke liye, there is this u delta t by delta x, which is a current number. So you would have to use different delta t's to keep the equivalent number less than 1. We have understood all of this. Okay. So then we have also changed turbulence to a laminar because that is also an important parameter to change. Okay. So of all of this, do you guys have any questions? in this overview that you have seen of incompressible solvers. We have talked about only incompressible solvers. Any questions now you can ask. Okay. So now we have kind of stepped you on to what is the background of CFD. How does open form mirror the CFD process? We have taught you how to start and run a simulation in CFD and understand steady and transient requirements. What do you mean by steady simulation, transient simulation? which solver to choose within the incompressible domain okay so with that today my session is done afternoon you will start with meshing but now i will let it be to biraj i want all of you who have not who have come late who have not installed properly all of you to sit here catch up with everything before the second session Okay. Uh, Ma'am, I have one last question. Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah, I'm just thinking aloud. So, regarding this current number, hmm. is there any possibility, any yeah. kind of flow where we will deliberately make sure your current number is greater than one? For example, maybe we are simulating an ocean or maybe atmosphere. Is 
Okay. So typically, I won't try to make it more than one. But mm-hmm. so there are certain problems, complex problems where I need a very quick initial guess. Yes. Okay. So in those cases, the problem is complex. So I cannot do a steady state simulation. So I okay. do run a transient, but I am not very particular about my delta t. Okay. okay. So yes. then I generate a very quick delta t and a u profile. Okay. That u profile will go into my actual really resolved simulation with the proper delta t. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So those are the cases where I will compromise. Because see, otherwise in the original very resolved simulation, I will start with a zero velocity because I don't know my velocity estimations in the entire domain. But that is not really helpful for me at this point. Then I will, and steady state is crashing. So I will do a transient. I will not bother whether my uh, Kuron number is more than one. I will kind of let it run to give me an initial velocity estimates. And that U file I'll map onto the initial condition. Okay, that's like a better initial guess. Absolutely. Okay, okay. I understood. Thank you. Anybody else? Hmm. Ma'am, I want to ask one question from comment, from fundamental equation, navier stokes equation. Hmm. Uh, when we take the navier stokes equation, then we write a del rho or del t. Hmm. Then after we convert into generalized form, then we write the del rho phi into del t. Correct. So what's the makes the difference between the because we introduce the flux in this term or some other no. thing? So del rho, see. Do not look of okay. I understand why your confusion comes. Leave the conservation equation, conservation of mass out of the picture. Yes, ma'am. Only momentum and energy are transport equations. So when I wrote del rho phi, I'm only talking about the transport equations and not the continuity equation. But in some textbooks, you will see that phi term written there, but they will say phi is equal to one for yes, continuity equation. That means, forget it. Okay. So, uh, I read in some books that uh, if we don't take the phi term hmm. in the equation, that's called the generalized equation. If we, uh, if we don't take the phi term, that's called the non-conservative equation. So, what's the difference between conservative or non-conservative with respect to the phi term? Right. So, see, I think you're, con- uh, you're getting confused between two, three terminologies. First of all, one terminology is conservative and non-conservative. Conservative form means none of the variables are outside the derivative. So sometimes Mm -hmm. you've seen this uh, for the divergence term. You will see something dot del the divergence u, correct? For the term. That means outside the derivative you have a term. Conservative form is keeping everything within the derivative form. Okay, because that involves some, uh, you know, discretization related things. I don't want to get into that. But it, everything is within that, you know, that um, partial derivative term. Everything is inside. That is conservative form versus non-conservative. It will also have phi. Okay. Now, if I'm saying phi is equal to one. one that means i am just saying that in the generalized form if i want to write my mass conservation which has no um what do you call it no fee within the time change it's only do rho by do t yes, then ma'am. i will call it as uh Generalized form with phi is equal to 1. Typically, those notation, that notation is not suggested. Okay. okay. So, don't look at it in that form. Conservative, non-conservative is very well known. Sometimes, non-conservative form of writing is much more better for your CFD coding. Okay. But this phi is only like a peop- way people write to make things. So, even in my lecture, I've only shown that phi term only for the transport equation. What is transport? Only momentum and energy equation. It is not for the conservation equation. 
Oh, okay, so we should not consider the conservation equation right in this equation. Just conserve, just uh, focus on the momentum equation, okay. like transport. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And one more thing we are using in turbulence, like, like rho u dash into v dash. Hmm. So we consider like uh, just a momentum of uh, uh, momentum of flow in u direction, and the dis uh, disturbance occurred on y direction. And we want to connect both of uh, coordinates with these things uh, in you, physical world. In physical world, I'm, I want to see it. Achha. So typically, okay, this will take me a whole lecture, which I don't want to get into. But I will tell you very shortly what it means, right? Typically, when you have, when you feature turbulence, it's like these kind of disturbances in the flow. Correct? Yes, so if I'm moving my hand like this in the disturbance, there is a disturbance in the U direction. There's a disturbance in the V direction. Correct? Yes, so uh, typically disturbances propagate if it is a combination of U prime and V prime. Meaning disturbances in this direction and this direction will propagate. Very shortly put. I, there's a lot more complexity to it. So that U prime, V prime product is the main contributor okay yeah. so now how do i feature now this is this is a very complex movement mm -hmm. how do i feature it in my physical simulation so what do i say is that this movement is kind of a resistance to the flow correct so yeah. i will model it as a viscosity term Additional viscosity, not just my flow viscosity. So I say there is a flow viscosity. Uh, sorry, a fluid viscosity. The property of the fluid as a viscosity. But I will call this turbulent viscosity. This is like a viscous force. Okay. And a disturbance. It is a force. So I put that viscous force. You remember there are two force terms. One is surface force and a body force. Yes, right? sir. So for the surface force, I say, okay, fluid viscosity is one force. Okay. okay. But this turbulent viscosity is also a viscosity or a force, okay. force generating term. So the main thing that turbulence models do is they will say this disturbance is a kind of force and they will put it in a, uh, in terms of mu dou u by dou x, you know, dou v by dou x. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Yes. But, so that, uh, yeah. but these forces in a line two directions in horizontal or vertical directions. Mm -hmm. So we should uh, multiply on it or because I'm confusing on this multiplication. multiplication. So I will suggest because this is a whole lecture, I will suggest look at Reynolds averaged Navier-Stokes equation. Okay. 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 Because that is what this averaging Rand's form of the equation talks about this exact question of yours. Why U prime V prime product is coming? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Ma'am, I had a question. Uh, what is the difference when we are using a like a turbulent model to solve a laminar equation? We are just like I said, putting this mu t term, no, that term to zero. So we can use a turbulence model equation to solve a laminar equation. There will not be any difference in uh, the solution. Mostly. Okay. okay. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, I have a doubt on that current number. That's your pro we have discussed about that 1D type, meaning it is a U delta T by delta X. Hmm. If it is a 2D or it is a 3D case, then how is the current number for the Similar in every direction, in every direction, you will have that criterion applied. There is a particular Meaning, form. then uh, it will be u delta t by delta x uh, plus uh, v delta t by delta y plus uh, v w delta t by delta x, or how though you can search, it's available online. It won't be plus, it will be a combination of these. Okay, okay, okay you can very, you can just say CFL for three dimensional coordinates, you will get it. Okay. And but nothing to add. Anyway, you will have to take the CFL criterion basis the most limiting criterion. Do you understand what I mean? If you have no. 10 cells and your CFL in 9 cells is 0.5. Right? 
the CFL in one important cell is 1.2. Then that is your limiting cell. You have to work on that. Got it? So even if you calculate the code, like every iteratively, some of these codes display the CFL numbers. You will see it calculating a CFL number, but that's the limiting CFL number that it's calculating. In some cases, these cells might be in some part of the domain which is not important. So even then your code will run. Okay. Any other questions? Hello. Huh. Uh, Ma'am, uh, can you explain the difference between the uh, simple algorithm and pimple? I think uh, we use uh, in pimple, we use both the combination of simple and piezo to solve it. Yes. Uh, the system and uh, in some of the cases was mentioned that we can use a CFL number or uh, quadrant number more than one in case of pimple. Yes, only because the solver permits it numerically. But if you see, it is only allowed but not recommended. You still need to remain under one for a good simulation. None of an SEFD expert will even touch you if you do CFL more than one, even using the pimple solver. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so I think if there are no further questions, um, I will let you guys continue and finish up and hope you have a good workshop. I'll see you day after tomorrow, first half with heat transfer. Uh, and of course, you can keep asking questions. You can let Payal or me know if you have any further questions. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, I have one question. Uh, so in this uh, finite volume uh, solution file, uh, mm -hmm. so we have added p reference cell and p reference value to zero zero. So like he mentioned that like it to use zero gradient boundary condition like but we have done that in the boundary conditions already. I don't understand why we are doing this here. Uh, so can you explain that? Good question. So p ref typically for different applications later on in Navier Stokes when you're solving natural convection like flows, it becomes important. See, right now you're only doing a very basic condition of lid driven cavity. Correct? Right. right. Uh, where you are setting an overall pressure, right? And it is only saying that uh, there is redo gradients at the walls. Right? Right. In some cases, you might not have a reference value of pressure basis which calculations have to be made. Okay. In those conditions, you would help the solver solve the pressure equation better by giving a reference pressure for complex situations. But here we don't need because it's a well-defined problem. Okay, and then P ref cell is the cell identity, or uh, what is it? Uh, I forget now what you're uh, actually referring to. I would presume every cell's P ref. Okay, okay, okay. I yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so I will close for now, and I will let the team continue. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks. <laughs>